In this video, we're gonna take care of making the foam block and then cutting it out and shaping it using the spline tool inside Inventor. So to begin with, I'm gonna go out to a standard IPT and hit create and wait for Inventor to load up. Essentially, what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna take a foam blank and make it full, uh, just like it comes in the kit, and then we'll cut and shape it the way that we'd like for printing down the road, and we'll get to that in a future video. But as we load up here, uh, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go up to a 2D sketch here in Inventor once it loads all the way up, and it's there. So we're gonna go up there and we're gonna go to the front view just because that makes things nice and easy. Once we're in sketch mode, we're gonna make a rectangle and by measuring our foam block, it should be eight inches long and I'm gonna hit tab here and it should be two inches tall. Uh, so I have my width and I have my height set up and I'm gonna finish my sketch and this whole thing uh, is going to get extruded two and a half inches. And I'll hit okay at that point. So we have a foam block. At this point, what I wanna do is I wanna make this thing more aerodynamic. Uh, by default, this block isn't gonna do a great job, especially if I put a motor on top of it. It's really not gonna do very well for what we need to do uh, for this assignment. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click in here and go to new sketch. And I'm doing that on the front end uh, because I wanna be able to go through and sketch out what's happening here and cut away this area. So I'm gonna go up to the line tool and go to the drop down. And I have two different splines. A uh, spline essentially allows you to take a line, instead of going point by point, it allows you to add points and have the line curve around it, as you can see by these uh, drop down pictures here, uh, which is really nice to do. So I'm gonna go to the spline tool. I'm gonna start somewhere up here. I want a little flat area at the top so that I can put my motor on there and be happy and go with that. So I'm gonna go somewhere around here and I'm just gonna go out and try to make something that I think looks like a nice shape uh, for what I wanna do. And then I'll curve that down there. And when I'm done, I'll hit my green check mark and I have my tool here. If this happens up here on the top right hand side where it's coming out, you just need to adjust these little lines here and you can kind of curve it down. Uh, that's not going to work out for what we want to do. Uh, so it has to be inside of there. If for whatever reason it's not working, you can just click, hold and drag and move them down to where you want them to be. Uh, so maybe I really want that a little lower like that. And then this guy here uh, will change just the angle a little bit to get more of what we want. Last things we have to do is go back into our line tool and we need to close the loop here. Uh, so these lines are popping up, but they're not actually closed at this point. Uh, we need to go through and complete the loop and you'll notice that we get bluish purple lines there. It tells us that we have solid lines in place. Once we have that, we'll finish our sketch, go to extrude, uh, it has our surface automatically selected and instead of adding, we're going to cut. And when I hit that, I get this nice shape that I'm ready to use and go with on my piece. Uh, there's a couple other things I can do if I'd like. I can round off these edges. So I'm gonna go into fill it and I can select this long line here uh, along with the one at the top here. I'm gonna do that for all of the sides and you can select how big you want it to be. Maybe I want a half inch radius. And you can get a preview of what that looks like when I hit okay. You can see exactly what it looks like. So I get a nice smooth shape. Uh, you can see this is a little high here. I could go back and refine that, but for right now we're fine. And then I also wanna add some color to it. There's two ways. You can go into the color wheel and do that, or the quicker way, although it's not technically correct, is you go to the drop down and just find something that fits the color. I'm gonna pick cyan here because that's roughly the color of what we have for our foam. And then I can go back to my isometric and I have it set up and ready to go. So I have my area done, I have my foam. I'm gonna save this and then we're gonna work on a couple other parts in our next video.